It's Snow Time, an art journal page by Karen Burchill. The techniques used in this page are the salt technique, collaging jelly prints, and using embossing powder. Here's a list of most of the materials that I used in this page. I love snowmen. And I, as I was flipping through my old folk art books, I found a pattern of these three dancing snowmen and I decided that I'm going to use them to put on my page. I realized pretty quick that they are bigger than my journal page, but I figured that I can put them, a couple of them kind of dancing right off the page. So the first step here is I'm tracing everything onto tracing paper. Now my back, my page is gessoed. And I'm just attempting to put the texture of snowflakes onto the page as some background texture using gesso. This doesn't really work and definitely not when I add the salt technique. So here I'm spraying some of my homemade sprays from Wilton Gel Icing Colorant. And I'm putting a variety of colors of blue, green, purple. I'm getting it quite wet because I want to add salt right away. So this is sea salt. You can use table salt. It'll give you a slightly different effect than this, but it will work in much the same way. And once I've done, done with this, I do set it aside to let it dry. While it's drying, I'm getting out some of my jelly prints, my clean off prints, and I'm tracing the boots and the jackets using graphite paper between the pattern and, and onto the jelly, the backs of the jelly prints. Now I thought I was being really smart and cutting out multiples at one time. But when you flip some, some of the pictures one way and some of them the other way, you end up with some things in reverse. And I caused myself no end of trouble and confusion in doing this. So I'm showing you the little bit of white there that I honestly don't know what happened to that later. I've, my plan was to color it. So I'm trying to put these boots on and I realize that I've inverted everything and I go, okay, no problem. I can flip my pattern upside down. I can see it through. Um, so I'm going to have to cut one more boot because one was inverted. So here I am, I'm going to cut the jackets and I've made a template there and I'm going to cut it. And I cut a couple extras. I wasn't sure what colors I wanted to use. So now my salt is pretty much dry. I did use a heat tool a little bit at the end to dry it, so just to keep moving myself along. And the effect that I have here is just beautiful. This would be gorgeous underwater um, or a night sky like I've done here. Because the sprays will activate with water, I did take it outside and spray it with Krylon Workable Fixative because I don't want to mess up my background. So I'm just kind of assembling everything, making sure I have all the pieces and getting it straight. I'm a little paranoid now because um, I did goofed up so badly earlier. So I decide to trace the pattern right on to the background. And again, the graphite paper is in between. And then I go afterwards and I just use my white ink tense pencil so I could see it a little bit better. So as you can see, as I start painting this with white um, Liquidex paint, acrylic paint, it's turning blue. The workable fixative didn't, either I didn't spray enough or it's not working quite as well as I wanted it to, but it's definitely very blue. 
So I'm thinking, okay, maybe I should have been putting gesso here first, that maybe that was the move. So once I dry this, I do go in with gesso, with my white gesso, and there you see it, and cover it. I had a very clear idea of what I wanted to do on this page and I kept running into technical difficulties. But I persevered and I'm really happy with the end result. So the gesso seems to be a lot whiter than um, what happened with just the Liquitex Basics. So note to self, use, use gesso before painting. I think I might have been much happier with that. It's a little thicker. But in time, the blue still seems to seep through. And as I'm doing this and thinking about it, I remember that I've seen people use gel medium to seal gelatos or other um, water activated mediums that they use. So there I go applying a layer of gel medium, my golden gel medium, to all the white parts of the snowman. And after a quick dry, I go in and put another coat of white paint, white acrylic paint. And this seems to have done the trick. I'm, I'm not unhappy with the light tinge of blue in it. It makes it kind of an icy white. I'm just giggling to myself as I do this because it was like, how many times am I going to paint this? The snowman's heads sh should have been all the same and they're distinctly not the same now because I've gone in and, and with each coat, I think I've destroyed the, plant, the pattern. So getting their coats on and figuring out, okay, what I need to layer first, second, and third. Because this pattern was designed to be cut out of wood and it has that 3D effect, you kind of need to build that in and do a little bit of thinking around that. And obviously I didn't do that at the beginning. So, and I'm placing the gel medium both on the surface of the page and on the back of the jelly prints that I'm collaging on. And then I put a coat on top. The gel medium doesn't seem to activate the, um, the colors, the Wilton colors. Just trying to get it in the right place. Cutting out the noses after tracing. I'm not sure why I thought I needed to trace these noses. It's such a difficult shape and, and so complex and all. little bit of blue seems to be coming through so one more coat of white paint if I had done my background with acrylic paints I would have avoided all of this because it wouldn't have bled through but I wanted to use the salt technique and that works best with the sprays You'll notice that the coats kind of blend into the background. 
and you'll see later on another the net one of the, the upcoming steps really adds and makes that pop and step step forward from the background here I go in with my Stabilo all pencil black and I'm just activating it with water just to outline the snowman the body and the jackets and coats and scarves this really makes makes this pop you can also use the stabilo all pencil to shade and add some depth to to your picture you can use your neo color twos any watercolor pencil that you have or ink tense pencil and get a very similar effect so use what you have you could even use a charcoal pencil and rub it in and that will give you the shading and make it pop I could have also have used my blending tools and used my stays on ink and edged the coats and the pieces before I glued them down that would be another option. So there's lots of ways that you can create the same effect. So there is never one right way of doing it. I think we get caught up on, well, no, we have to do it this way. No, we don't. That snowman definitely looks like an egghead. I glued the doses on with the gel medium. And because they were made with Wilton dyes as well as the background, there was some bleed through and I kind of got mud. So I did attach another layer of nose on there. And you saw me just a minute ago put the eyes on using the stylus and black acrylic paint. So I'm getting out my reflections letters. These are a Michaels brand, or Recollections letters, I should say. It is a Michaels brand, and my saying is going to be, it's showtime, snow time. Sorry. I lost the and. It was almost it's showtime. I spent about 20 minutes looking for that and. Like I said, this, this page challenged me. And I'm putting the letters on one at a time, primarily because when you do that, you can get them closer together than if you were to get them all lined up and on one acrylic block. It's a personal preference. To get the apostrophe, I'm using, I have quotation marks in one of my, um, letter sets and I'm just using one part of the quotation mark by putting a piece of paper and so I don't get the second one out. So I have my Versa mark out and I have this little asterisk stamp again that came with my letters and I'm stamping it with Versa mark all over and putting white embossing powder on top and if you want to know how not to do deal with embossing powder, watch what I do. I ended up with embossing powder all over the place. It was just, I had to do a major cleanup at the end of it. So I'm using the heat tool to melt the embossing powder. And I'm really liking the effect. It didn't get a, come out as crisp as I would have liked, but that has more to do with the person who is doing it than the um, embossing powder. I'm using my silver jelly roll pen to outline the letters. And I'm using my micron pen to put the excess, some detailing on the boots. I go in afterwards and redo that with the silver jelly roll because I, it 
you, the black just got lost, it didn't stand out enough. I'm deciding we need some snowflakes down here. So I get out my embossing powders again and make yet another mess. Before I'm done, I want to set off the page and frame it, so I'm getting out my black Neo, Neo Color 2. I love these Neo Colors, the, the pigments are so rich, um, and I find it very fast to do the edging of the pages. And there's the finished page. It really turned out well, despite the battle that it gave me. Thanks so much for watching. Take time to subscribe and set, set it so that it, you get notified of the next upcoming videos. Take time to go through my playlists for some of my older videos. There might be something of interest to you. Thanks again. Bye.